Nearly 60% of all global water runoff comes from forests. More than half of all our species of animals and plants are found in tropical forests. Now these multiple values and functions of the world's forests have important implications for any discussions on the role of forests within climate change mitigation and adaptation. Addressing climate change offers a wide range of potential added benefits. However, there are major risks if such mitigation efforts are poorly designed and implemented. So while we have to act fast, we also must ensure the environmental integrity as well as the respect for human rights and social and environmental safeguards. So as we leave Copenhagen, we need to be prepared to urgently initiate large-scale global action on Red Plus. I can hardly think of any better transition between the 2009 UN Year of, the clim of Climate Change and the 2010 UN Year of Biodiversity than the establishment of a Red Plus mechanism that helps us halt the loss of forests in developing countries. It can also be an immensely important contribution to the social and economic development in many developing nations. Guyana is a case in point, a country the size of Great Britain and one of South America's poorest nations. More than 75% of the country is covered by large, intact tropical forest. Under the leadership of the president, a national low-carbon development strategy has been worked out. Guyana will seek economic and social development for its people without going the traditional route of deforestation and increased consumption of fossil energy. Finance for this low-carbon development is sought from Red Plus from a Red Plus mechanism, among others. Reductions in forest emissions will be reinvested in activities that will spur economic and social development in an environmentally friendly manner while adapting to climate change. Improved protection and management of forests is also important for uh, adaptation to the effects of climate change. Intact or well-managed forests have greater resilience towards the effects of a changing climate. Keeping or enhancing this resilience is an investment in securing vital ecosystem services such as energy and water supply. An effective deal on reduced deforestation and sustainable land use will also help raise agricultural productivity contributing to increased food security in tropical countries. Forests do play an important role in the fight against poverty by constituting a safety net. Sustainable development means we are not only focusing on climate change mitigation for the benefit of future generations. Life and opportunities for present generations are also of the essence. While respecting rights and involving the affected stakeholders in the design and implementation of Red Plus is a moral and to some extent also a formal obligation. This is in fact also the only way to make Red work. Unless Red is designed and implemented in ways that gain the support of the affected population, the results will not last. We depend on its wise design and implementation. Red Plus is a mechanism for transfer of funds from developed to developing nations. Any national Red Plus strategy should address governance issues, including corruption. Full transparency in all transfers of funds into the Red Plus participating countries, as well as transparency on all allocations of these funds within the countries would be a contribution to this end. Involvement and participation of civil society in the implementation of national Red Plus strategies 
is an important uh, aspect also in this context. Safeguards are clearly needed to ensure that a Red Plus mechanism does not create incentives for converting natural forests into monoculture plantations. So, all in all, we need to learn quickly. Because red is a new and ambitious concept. There are def definitely many useful experiences to draw on from previous efforts in reducing deforestation, improving forest management and participatory processes for management of natural resources, which can help us avoid repeating old mistakes. However, red is also in many ways a terra incognita. The mechanism has the potential to change the economic logic and social circumstances that contribute to rapid destruction of tropical forests. It is therefore imperative that we learn quickly as we explore this new and ambitious concept. C4 and other research institutes, as well as non-governmental organizations, will have important roles to play in documenting and disseminating lessons learned. I am sure you will fill this role with excellence. Forest and climate issues have never been higher on the political agenda. Judging from the size of this audience and the extensive number of deliberations to take place here today, there is clearly significant attention to these issues also in the scientific communities and among civil society organizations. There is reason to be optimistic. So let me sum up. We know what to do. We know what it takes to do it. We can save the world's remaining tropical forests and help save the climate. So now, in the coming days, let us all help our leaders make the right decisions so that they can leave Copenhagen without looking like the emperor in the well-known fairy tale, the emperor's clothes. Because he, he had no clothes, and we don't want our leaders to walk out without it. Thank you.